One of the coolest and most convenient databases that I have come across in the past year is Convex, right? Convex is basically a database and a backend all in one that provides real time updates. Now, I'll explain what all of that means in a second, but you might be thinking, wait a minute, this is the fly.io YouTube channel. What, why are we talking about another service? Well, that's because now you can self host your very own Convex instance. So I'm going to show you how to do that on fly. Now, if you're a little new to Convex or you haven't used it in a while, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how it works. But if you'd like to jump ahead to the self-hosted demo, feel free to skip to this timestamp. Convex provides a document relational database, which is basically just a relational database that you can throw random JSON objects at. So you can absolutely have a schema that's enforced, but if you send it unstructured data, it's smart enough to create a table for you. It's very clever. You can then read and write to your database using queries and mutations that you define. Additionally, you can write actions, which are basically serverless functions. And so when I say that Convex can replace your backend, this is what I'm talking about. All of those queries, mutations, and actions then get synced to Convex, and you can call them using one of Convex's client libraries. When you do this, Convex will send updates as your data changes through a WebSocket in real time. All right, so to see this in action, let's jump into our self-hosted demo. Okay, so I already have an app that uses Convex and I'm using the tutorial that's available on the Convex documentation. It's their very simple chat app. And I'm gonna walk you through what that code looks like just so you're familiar with how things are connected. So let's take a look at the code. So any app that uses Convex will have this Convex directory. And this is where you put your queries, your mutations and your actions. So here I have this chat file with a mutation that inserts new messages into the database with user and body as arguments, right? Now, messages, that's the name of the table. But if we were to go to my convex instance, which right now I'm using the cloud hosted version, we'll get to self host in a second. The data that you'll see that there's no table called messages, there's no table at all. But if we go to the actual application, this is it running locally. If I were to type in hello and run that mutation, it pops up and we go to our data. And what do you know, we now have a table called messages. So earlier when I was talking about document relational databases, this is what I'm talking about. You can just throw it JSON. It'll be like, this is the table you want. Now, if you wanted to enforce a schema, you could absolutely do that. They've got this convenient generate schema button where you can uh, just copy that over. Now, uh, I'm not going to do that. We're just going to keep it simple. So that's how the mutation works. And then if we, of course, want to query all of those messages so we can display them in the chat, we can run this query command. And then in our application, I know this is a lot of React code and uh, you don't need to familiarize yourself too much with it. But the point is this use query hook is how I actually get the messages. And then to actually run that mutation, we, we use this send message function that we're defining. Okay. So that is how it works. But now I have my convex instance in the cloud, but I want to self host it on fly. So here's what we're going to do. The instructions for self hosting a convex instance are all available in the convex backend repo under this self hosted directory. Now, because we're deploying this on fly, we're going to go to the fly directory where they've got very specific instructions. Now let's talk about what this architecture is going to look like. You're going to be dealing with three applications, three fly apps. One of them is going to be your main application. The one we just saw. The second one is going to be the convex backend. This is where the database is. And then the third is the dashboard. Now, technically you don't actually need the dashboard, but it's definitely a, a quality of life kind of thing. So I'm going to show you how to implement it. So let's start by copying over all the files we need. And so I'm going to use, they have this very convenient dgit command that basically just lets you like grab a specific subdirectory of a, of a repository. So I'm going to go ahead and run that command in my project root. Now you can organize this however you want. Um, when you're deploying the backend and the, the dashboard for convex, the actual code that you're deploying is, is there's one file. It's a fly.toml 
Uh, it just points to the correct Docker image for each of those applications. So I feel like just keeping it in your main application repo, it, you're not adding like hardly any bloat to it. So that's what I'm gonna do, but you can organize it however you want. Uh, I've already cloned this. Let's go ahead and CD into fly slash backend. We're gonna deploy that first. Okay, once we're inside our backend folder, we are gonna run fly launch, and this is going to create our backend app. Would you like to copy its configuration over? We're gonna say yes. All right, here it's asking if I wanna tweak any of the settings. I'm gonna leave it as default, but if you wanna change the name of the app or the region, you're welcome to do that here. Okay, so it's deploying, looking good. Okay, so it's deployed. Now, we wanna set a couple of environment variables. And this is because sometimes in your functions, you'll want to be able to reference the location of your convex backend. And so to do that, we set the, a couple of environment variables. So if we go over here to the instructions, we're gonna copy over this convex cloud origin and then convex site origin. So in our logs where we just deployed our app, let's copy over the URL of our new fly app. Uh, do not include the trailing slash. So we're gonna add that here. And then for site origin, it's gonna be the same thing, but slash HTTP, great. Now I am keeping these environment variables in my fly.toml because they're, it's not really, they're not secrets, it's fine if they get out. Um, but if you'd like to, you can also save these as secrets and you can just do that by running fly secrets set. But I've changed my fly.toml, so now let's go ahead and deploy it. So I'm gonna run fly deploy. While it's doing this, I'll point out fly launch is just the command that will instantiate your application and then deploy it the first time. But any subsequent changes, you can just run fly deploy. Wonderful, so our app is deployed with the new environment variable set. Now we need to generate an admin key. In the tutorial, it gives you a command that you can run. So basically we're gonna SSH into one of our machines for our convex backend, and we're gonna run this generate admin key script. Boom, and now we have an admin key. Now, don't close this window because we need that key. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and CD back into my main directory or excuse me, our main application, right? When you first run npx convex dev and you're using the cloud version, it will set this convex deployment environment variable, okay? But this is specific to the cloud and we don't actually want this if we're self-hosting our own. So I'm gonna comment this environment variable out. Now, let's first replace this Vite convex URL. This is, um, I mean, I'm using a Vite app. You might not, what, wherever you're storing your convex URL in your application, you'll wanna replace it with your new self-hosted version, assuming you wanna use your self-hosted version locally, okay? Um, I'm gonna get to development and production stuff in a second. So I'm gonna replace my Vite URL, and then I'm gonna set two new self-hosted specific environment variables. We're gonna set convex self-hosted URL and self-hosted admin key. So let's start with that admin key. I just ran that script, so let's copy this over. And then we'll use that same fly URL. Now, if you're working with an app that already has Convex installed, I want you to make sure that you have the latest version of the Convex package installed because this is what's gonna be necessary when deploying to a self-hosted instance, all right? So I've made sure just now to install the latest version, so we're ready to go. So from here, again, I'm in my main application, right? I'm at the root of my main application. I'm gonna run npx, convex dev. Now what this is gonna do, you can run this normally if you're using the cloud version and it's gonna sync your convex code. So all of these mutations and queries, right? It's gonna sync that to the cloud instance of convex. But because we have these environment variables set, it's actually gonna sync that to our self-hosted version. And what's cool about this is that you don't actually have to do another fly deploy. You don't have to deploy anything new to fly. You can just run this command and your queries and mutations and actions will all be there. So let's run npx convex dev and it'll sync everything to that new self-hosted version. And it's ready. So you'll see that it's kind of hanging here because convex dev is a process that doesn't close. It's meant to be for 
development, obviously. In the cloud version of Convex, they have development and production environments, but in the self-hosted version, it's kind of a, you define what that looks like. Basically, if you want to have a self-deployed development instance and a prod instance, uh, you're welcome to do that. Today, I'm just gonna be working with a single one, but just know that if you wanna have separate instances, you absolutely can. The important thing to know is that when you run npx convex dev, it's gonna look at your env.local file for these environment variables. But if you wanna sync to your production instance, which again, that's just whatever you define, you're going to run npx convex deploy dash dash env file, and then the path to the, the end file that contains your production uh, instance. So just for pretend, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file uh, and it's gonna be .env.prod, for example, right? And here I'm gonna copy in those self-hosted URLs, got it. And let's just pretend that these variables are different, right? Let's pretend that this points to a different self-hosted instance. But if I wanted to deploy to that production instance, I would do convex deploy env file, and then I would do dot env dot prod, boom. And there you go. And you'll notice that this one doesn't hang because it's it's for production. It's you know it doesn't need to be ongoing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run our uh, local instance of this chat application, and this time it's actually going to point to that new instance. And you'll notice previously we had some messages in there. Well, now we're starting with a clean slate and that's because we're starting with a new backend. But let's go ahead and deploy the dashboard because this is gonna make our life a lot easier. So uh, I'm gonna cancel out of this and we're gonna CD into fly slash dashboard. Now here we're going to uh, run fly launch again, but we're gonna provide it with an environment variable. We're gonna set this next public deployment URL to our convex backend, okay? The, dash the dashboard happens to be a Next.js app. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch this. Yes, I'd like to copy the configuration. No, I don't need to tweak anything. All right, and it's deployed. So let's go ahead and see our dashboard. So here is our dashboard app. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, yes, please. And here it's gonna ask for that admin key. So let's go ahead and copy that over. Boop. And here we go. Okay, once again, we have no data because we haven't used it before. But now if we send a message, boop, and then we go to our dashboard, voila, we have our new messages table. So that's how it works. So there you go. That is how you self-host a convex instance on fly.io. Now, if you have more questions about this, the documentation for deploying on fly is in that self-hosted slash fly directory in the convex backend repo. Again, I've got a link down below. So if anything has changed since I've made this video, that will be your source of truth. So definitely double check that if you're confused about anything. If you'd like to learn more about convex, they have fantastic documentation. I've got a link down below. They have quick starts for all sorts of different languages and frameworks, not just JavaScript. So definitely check that out. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.